Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we're checking out this two book duo, the Wilderness Book of Battle Mats. They work as a team, you get them as one kit, but it's two books. It's basically a giant book of battle mats if you have seen them already in the previous videos or elsewhere, um, but split into two so that you can carry it easier. <laughs> first scene in the two books is a jungle scene, highly detailed and generic enough you could use over and over again, as are most all of these. Just like this grassy meadow scene, which all kinds of battles could be waged upon it, and this potential ambush scene with hills and rock formations making it a little more risky to travel through. And this scene gives us a little stream and some paths for adventurers to follow, perhaps close to a town. And then we have a waterfall and a river scene. I think I'd use these separate more often than I'd use the whole four pages. You never know what crazy idea the adventurers will come up with to cross it, so why not give that chance to them? This one gives your players a false sense of comfort with flowers and maybe whistling birds in the distance before the ogre comes rushing at them. And this one is where the ogre chases them to, and I would definitely keep the stone bridge secret until later and force them to cross this rock tin log that may or may not hold their weight. Though it could be a way to slay that ogre, so they might as well try it. This swampland or shallow basin area is great for introducing difficult terrain that halves their speed and makes them regret going in this direction. I particularly like this seashore scene where they might face new adventures coming off of their boat that I capsized on them. Then they can take shelter in the ruins up the hill from the shore, which I definitely did not inhabit with undead. Or they could run into more swampland, or well maybe just one side. They could head to a mysterious cave, inhabitants unknown, or maybe to a meadow of pretty flowers with nothing at all bad lurking underground. Or, or if I turn the book around to another river heading off to some unknown location. Or to the outskirts of a town. There really are many different ways to combine the books, which I really love. Page 19 and 20 show underwater scenes in one book and little islands in the other. Great for meeting marine monsters or farming mussels and clams, because they forgot to pack food. The next two scenes are forest scenes, which is a must-have for Dungeons and Dragons. I think you would agree with me there, because so much can happen when they decide to leave the well-beaten path and stray forever. Uh, I mean, with that tracker that they definitely remember to take with them through the forest. You could most certainly place 3D or 2D terrain over this so that each time it looks like a different place. There isn't much in the way of buildings in this one, but being wilderness that makes sense, you just want to use one of the other books for the building scenes. This cave system is simple, and I think you'd only use one quarter map at a time, and probably use the other maps from the other sets if you want to do a more complex route than this owlbear or wyvern layer provided here. I do like the snowy mountainous areas that could offer a height advantage or disadvantage depending on where the characters are standing, but perhaps the most useful of the snowy scenes is the blizzard with only snow to be seen for miles around until you're nearly eaten by a northern land shark. Though this icy scene is very particular, you could use those waves over and over and over again. In colder climates, ice forming on water would be the norm, and who knows how many times your players are going to think it's a good idea to go out on ice that looks like that. On the other hand, you just put a treasure chest sitting out near the water, don't worry. There will never be an entire party that can turn away from such an obvious trap. Speaking of traps, how about sandworms and pit traps? I hope your party members have a good sense of direction. Look, there's signs of people living nearby. Oh, never mind. That's just rocky formations. Keep walking. Is that a lizard with eight legs? As you can see, if you completely run out of ideas, something like this can stir the imagination and make all kinds of fun scenarios for your players to encounter. And just like the others, it has on the back exactly what you get so you can quickly uh, check out what pages you're looking for and open them up 
as fast as that. In the description, I'll make certain to add the other video if you wanted to check out the other ones that are in the series. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe if you did. And uh, if you're interested in what color I have on my nails, that would be Imperial Fist Contrast Paint since uh, I'm playing with that right now. It's just an acrylic paint and it looks pretty good. Unrelated, but if you needed that color for uh, painting your miniatures, that's what it is. Okay, bye! Oh, there's the artist. Cover art is James Gray and then the map art is Matt Henderson. Matt Henderson did the artwork. Matt Henderson, I really like your artwork. I think it's really pretty.